glad you could join me again today. We're going to be talking about struggling today. It's a subject that we all face. Matter of fact, some people struggle all their life. They seem to never be out of a, a situation or a state of struggling. They, they struggle to fit in with maybe the crowd that they're trying to be friends with. They struggle to fit in at work. They struggle with their relationships all kinds of things until sometimes it's just like they struggle to even enjoy life. And then there are other people that struggle once in a while. Maybe they'll have a bout of depression or maybe a low time in their jobs or with their relationships. Maybe they have loneliness or just all manner of occasional ups and downs. And then there's people that just rarely struggle, that for some reason they just seem to have no problem in life. And um, they just seem to, to get on with it, and it just doesn't appear that they have any obvious hardships. But let me assure you, we all struggle. In one way or another, we all struggle, and that's just a fact. Whether we struggle in a way that people can see, or whether it's in a hidden way in our hearts, we are broken people living in a broken world, and so struggling is going to be a part of life. It doesn't sound very encouraging, doesn't it? I know. But I've also found that even though life can be hard, even though we struggle, it's better to erase that, that pipe dream that everything should be um, happily ever after, <laughs> to take off those rose-colored glasses and start to get a percept perception of life in the way that God sees it. And when I do that, when I stop trying to create life to be what the imagination would think it should be or some novel reads it to be, then I can see more clearly and I can actually accept the struggles of life and I can find the truth that's behind them and then I, I struggle less. So I want to talk with you today about struggling and so we're going to look at some just some basic reasons and see if we can't figure out how to make this journey just a little less painful. One of the reasons that we so often struggle is that we approach life with our emotions engaged, fully engaged, and we aren't using our intellect. We know that we want to be happy, and so if we don't get what we want, then we're reduced to tears. We have that pity party. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. We think that's the way to get through life. It doesn't work that way. Or we want to be happy, and so we think we have to fight to get whatever we want. And we will fight regardless of who it's against or even if it's against God. And no matter what anyone else says, we're going to fight to get what we think will make us happy. And our emotions are leading our every word and action. And we take very little thought about the, the consequences or how we're perceived by others. And then our emotions are the thing that drives our whole life. It becomes the whole motive. And it's a very unhappy way to live. We're setting ourselves up for more struggles when we live that way. Emotions are actually evidences that we're working from a weak base. And we're going to come back to that base a little bit later. There's another reason that sometimes we struggle, and that's because we're willfully disobedient. We disregard decorum, the unwritten social laws of life. We think everybody should let us have it our way. And everybody should bend to us. And we won't be told any different. So we struggle and we fight, getting more and more agitated, more and more angry at everyone else instead of looking at our own attitude of disobedience. And then some people, some people struggle because they're self-focused. Everything in their life or thought is always about themselves. They believe that they should be made happy. Everyone should make them happy. Everyone owes them something. They should have everything they want and they should never be denied because they... Um, deserve it or they're valuable and all these words that the world is throwing at us right now makes them think that they can have everything like that and they should have all of the attention and this too is a very unhealthy way to go at life. Others struggle with immaturity. They don't want to face the hardships of life. They want it easy and yet it keeps biting them and they just can't understand why that happens. Why does my life not go so smoothly? And then there are those that struggle because of lies. Lies they've believed about themselves or even actions that they've taken based on lies. They have feelings of unworthiness or being unloved or unneeded. And any sort, any number of uns that you could put out there will keep them from seeing the real truth. 
and their life is just built on a falsehood of some sort that's put them in a position of maybe loneliness or inadequacy or fear or, or even anger, and it's causing untold struggles. Disappointment and misplaced trust in others is some another reason why we might struggle. You know, life hasn't turned out the way we imagined. Someone let us down and we can't find our feet without them, or so we think, and so we flounder. And you could probably think of other reasons why people struggle, and maybe even why you struggle. But let me assure you, we all have our struggles. The challenges of life are real. So what are we going to do? Well, let's consider a few steps that I found that really helped me when I face a struggle, a trial, an affliction, whatever word you want to use for it. First thing I do is I put my struggle right in front of me. I call it what it is. I set it down there. Uh, sometimes I just write it on paper. Or maybe at times I even can imagine it just standing there and I'm going to just give it a good talking to. Stand it right in front of me. Whatever works, just put that struggle in front of you. And then ask it three questions. Where did you come from? Do you match God's word? And if I continue believing you, where will you take me? And you know, the answer to those three questions gives you a good grip on the situation, and it points you to some solutions. Now, we can't take every scenario of struggle that we might face and go through them, but I want to just talk a little bit more about these three questions. When you ask your struggle, where did you come from? What you're saying is, where did it begin? What started it? What, what caused this situation? And then you're looking at, at what feeds it, and can you pinpoint it? Can you be honest about your part in that struggle? You know, most of our challenges, most of them, have two sides. If we're acting and reacting from raw emotion, then we're going to have a problem. If we're acting from self-centeredness or fear or lies that we believe, then, and then we aren't sure about the things that, that could happen, we, we just are sure that things are not going to turn out well. Well, you know what? Our own thoughts and perceptions might be the real source of our struggle. No sense blaming anyone else. If we haven't addressed our own uh, perceptions, our uh, responsibility inside the things that have happened. So we need to honestly take time to answer this question. Where did your struggle come from? Where did it begin? And that will give you a great uh, opportunity to go back and figure out what to do with it. You actually might have to stay here a while because sometimes it's not so easy to figure out where your struggle came from, to trace the problem back to the root. And it can be a bit soul-destroying to admit our guilt in a situation, but we must admit it if we're going to find a solution to our problem. And the second question is, no, not the second question, I'm sorry, we're still asking it, where did you come from? When you figure it out, like I said, you want to name it. It's, there's no sense saying, I've got a problem with so-and-so. You need to say what your problem is. Don't skirt around it. Don't try to um, fake it or gloss over it. Just tell it what it is. Give it a real name and find out what's behind that uh, motivation. What are you using to try to validate it? Sometimes it's just plain disobedience. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's anger or unforgiveness, or even immaturity. That's another reason that we can have struggles. You've got to come back to where did you come from? And then once you have that name, now you can do the second part. Do you match with God's word? You can start to compare it. And you see the Bible is just has multiple answers. It's just full of answers for the complex questions of life that we face. And it speaks directly to life, and it isn't afraid to call it what it is. There's a great tool called a topical Bible. And when I was a young Christian, I really used my topical Bible a lot. It's, it's basically a dictionary, and you can look up a word, maybe love, maybe forgiveness, whatever topic that you're wanting to know, and it will, it will give you a huge number of scriptures that deal with that topic. So when you're looking for your name for this problem, it's a good way to go back then and find out how to make it match with God's Word. What does God's Word say about forgiveness? What does it say about anger? What does it say about fear? And you'll get God's Word, or God's perspective on these things. And then you can begin to put it together in a much better and healthier way. They aren't expensive. You can probably buy one on on a used on Amazon, or even you could probably Google one that you can just use digitally, a topical Bible. It's a great tool. But here's the thing. 
You've got to take time to discover what's behind your struggle. You've got to figure it out. It would be a wasted effort unless then you took time to compare it to God's Word and see what God has to say. There's no, route, no reason to walk around and say, I have a problem with unforgiveness, but yet not be willing to bring that to the foot of the cross. There's no reason to go around and say, I'm an angry person, and be proud of it. The Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. So anger has got to be brought into line with God's Word. His opinion is what matters. And His opinion, applied to your life, will begin to solve your problems. It will make you stronger. It will give you that base that we talked about. And you will only gain strength as you put that problem under the power of God's Word. And the third question always turns me back to God's Word as well, because when I think about where this is going to take me, if I continue to believe it, I know how much I've already endured from this problem. And if I let my imagination go about where this problem is going to take me, it doesn't take long for me to say, I don't want to go there. I want to stop. I want to come back in line with God's Word. I want to deal with this thing biblically so God can bless me and we can find resolution to this thing. And I want to run as far away as I can from that problem. I don't want any of my struggles to overwhelm me. don't want them to break my marriage or bankrupt me or, or leave me without any friends. I want to have victory. So if all of our struggles are left to their own devices, if we don't deal with them, if the enemy has his way in your life, he will destroy you. That's his purpose. But God's purpose is to restore you. He wants to bring you back to strength. He wants to give you a plain and straight path that creates more happiness and confidence in your life. I know this has been a very quick and short um, discussion on a very complex problem, but let me assure you, those three questions can become some of your greatest tools when it comes to growing in Christ and solving your problems. Where did it come from? Does it match God's Word? And where will it take you if you continue believing it? If you want to study more on this subject, let me recommend my book, Talk Therapy. And there you can read more about problem solving and dealing with personal issues in a healthy way. I'm going to leave it there for today. And I hope that you don't have any struggles this week. And I'll see you next week.